All right, everybody. I have a special treat for you all today. Uh, we will be going through all five of these set boosters for Nuka Penna. So let's not waste any time. Uh, first off the hop, we have a spirit token. Take care of that later. And a treasure token. It's an interesting one. I haven't seen that art before. Have a look at that in a bit. Another treasure token. I have seen this art before. This one has... Oh, look at this. We've got a game. The Magic mini game, strictly better. Three to six players, three to six packs, 15 minutes. Objective. Some cards are strong and standard, others shine and draft. But which card looks the tastiest? Take turns being the judge and decide which magic card is the best of the best in each wacky category. Get ready. Randomly determine who will be the first judge. Each player then opens a pack and looks at their card. Let's play. The judge chooses a category from the list on the back of this card, either their favorite or at random. The other players each secretly submit a card from their pack that they think fits this category. When the judge has collected all the cards, they reveal each card, read it aloud, then choose the winner. The judge roll then passes to the next player and they select a different category. Let's have a look at what the categories are. To win, the first player to win three categories is the winner. Okay, so we have best hideout, first pick in draft, grossest, best hat or hair, best documentary title, weirdest crime, most dramatic, most suave, best singer, worst liar, next big influencer, best brawler, best pet, loudest, the next planeswalker, most luxurious, best romance novel title, fastest driver, best win condition, cutest, best heist code name. Worst Way to Die, Best Flavor Text, Best Getaway Plan, Most Suspicious, The Boss's Favorite, Best Eyewear or Makeup, Tastiest, Most Explosive, Most Useful Spell, Best Jazz Song Name, Worst Job, Most Wanted, Best Nickname, and Last, but Definitely Not Least, Least Trustworthy. That's pretty cool. I've had one of these so far. I think there's three for New Penna, so we just need one more in our last pack. Tearing into these here. We have a Rhino Warrior, single sided, secret layer token. So, let's see what the first pack can offer us today. Our art card, oops, sticky art cards. Our art card here is right there. Oh, I really like that with the art deco and the, the white marble with the gold and the blue background. It really works for me. That is an island. W. Fleming illustration, number 78 of 81. We've got a planes. Extract the truth for one and a black. Sorcery, choose one. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a creature enchantment or planeswalker card from it. That player discards that card. Target opponent sacrifices an enchantment. We have glorious outlaw. For three, a blue, black, and red, you get a four, five creature vampire rogue. When Glamorous Outlaw enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to each opponent and you scry two. Pay two and exile Glamorous Outlaw from your hand. Target land gains tap to add blue, black, or red. Until Glamorous Outlaw is cast from exile, you may cast Glamorous Exile for, sorry, Glamorous Outlaw for as long as it is remained exiled. We have a Shattered Seraph. I think this is the other art for Shattered Seraph. I think we've had all of them now. Four white, blue, and black for a 4-4 creature with flying. When Shattered Seraph enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Pay two and exile Shattered Seraph from your hand. Target, gain, target land gains tap to add white, blue, or black until Shattered Seraph is a cast from exile. You may cast Shattered Seraph for as long as it remains exiled. Unlucky Witness, one red for a 1-1 human citizen creature. 
When Unlucky Witness dies, exile the top two cards of your library. Until your next end step, you may play one of those cards. The guard took a midnight shift to earn a promotion. Unfortunately, so did the assassin. Nice. We have Riveteer's Decoy. One and a green for a 3-1. Human warrior creature. Riveteer's Decoy must be blocked if able. Blitz cost of 3 and a green. If you cast this spell for its blitz cost, it gains haste and, when this creature dies, draw a card. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. He keeps the heat of his, sorry, he keeps the heat off his allies by drawing it all to himself. Riveteer's Requisitioner, one and a red for a 3-1 Viashino Rogue creature. When Riveteer's Requisitioner dies, create a treasure token. Blitz cost of two and a red. Interesting. We have Botanical Plaza, which is a biome. Green and white. Sacrifice it after paying two plus a green and white to draw a card. Maestro's Charm. Every time I see this one, I really like the art. Uh, blue, black, and red for an instant. Choose one. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put one of these cards into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Each opponent loses three life and you gain three life. Or Maestro's Charm deals five damage to the target creature or planeswalker. We have Tramway Station, which is a biome black and red. Same as before, pay two plus the black and red. Sacrifice Tramway Station to draw a card. We have Jaxus the Troublemaker as our rare. She is a 2-3 legendary creature for three and a red. Pay a red and tap. Sorry, pay a red, discard a card. Uh, create a token that's a copy of another card target creature you control. It gains haste and, when this creature dies, draw a card. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Activate only as a sorcery. It also has a blitz of one plus a red. And our foil for this pack is Riveteer's Overlook. When Riveteer's Overlook enters the battlefield, sacrifice it. When you do, search your library for a basic swamp, mountain, or forest card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle, and you gain one life. Along the outer girders in gold filigree are inscribed the names of all those who fell to their deaths during the construction. That's not morose at all. Alright. Let's pull up number two here. Check out this art card. Pretty neat. Disdainful Stroke by Arena Nord Soul. 11 of 81. We have a Foil Mountain as our land. Civic Gardener. One and a green. For a 2 2 human citizen creature. Whenever Civic Gardener attacks, untap target creature or land. I've told you knuckleheads a hundred times. You can kill him here, but bury the body somewhere else. If you disturb my prized azaleas again, you'd better dig a second hole for yourself. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, we have Civil Servant. Green and white for a 2-3 cat citizen creature. Whenever Civil Servant attacks, you may tap another untapped citizen you control. If you do, Civil Servant gets plus one, plus zero, and gains lifelink until end of turn. Together, we can build a safer, brighter, new Capenna. Hmm. Okay. We have Gathering Throng. Two and a white for a 3-1 human citizen creature. When Gathering Throng enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards named Gathering Throng. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. A plus one is simply not enough. Mr. Orfeo the Boulder. One, a black, red, and green for a 2-4 legendary creature, which is a Rhino Warrior. Whenever you attack, double target creatures power until end of turn. Once he was jumped by a dozen Maestro's agents, you can still see their imprints in the pavement if you know where to look. 
We have Quaza Augur of Agonies. Kind of a neat art, actually, with the, the globes and the... I assume that's like air currents spinning around. Uh, one, a white, blue, and black for a 3-4 legendary creature, which is a Cephalid Advisor. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Some try to unravel the tangled skeins of fate. She reweaves them to her own deadly designs. Cool. Scuttling Butler. Reminds me of um, that Elder Scrolls game with the, uh, the stalkers, the fairy bug things. Cost of three for a 4-1 artifact creature, which is a construct. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, if you control two or more multicolored permanents, Scuttling Butler gains double strike until end of turn. Porter, Cleaner, and Bouncer, all in one. We've got Racer's Ring. It's a biome for red and green. We have Brazen Upstart. Red, green, and white for a 4-2 Elf Shaman creature with Vigilance. When Brazen Upstart dies, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it onto you, sorry, put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. For our rare, we have Maestro's Ascendancy. Look at that art. Blue, black, and red for an enchantment. Once during each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard by sacrificing a creature, in addition to paying its other costs. If a spell cast this way would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. Our rare today is Evolving Door. Two and a green for an artifact. Pay one, sacrifice a creature, count the colors of the sacrificed creature, then search your library for a creature card that's exactly that many colors, plus one. Exile that card, then shuffle. You may cast the exiled card. Activate only as a sorcery. In with the old, out with the new. And our foil is Rocco Cabaretti Caterer. Another very attractive card art there. Uh, X, red, green, and white for a 3-1 legendary creature. Elf Druid. When Rocco Cabaretti Caterer enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you may search your library for a creature card with mana value X or less. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. They wouldn't admit it, but some people join the Cabaretti just for the food. Alright, this was number three. Let's check out the art card. Pretty nice. That is Rogue's Gallery by Matt Stewart. 17 of 81. We have a forest. Just a basic land. Deal gone bad. Three plus a black for an instant. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Target player mills three cards. They put the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Feed the rumor mills with delicious treachery. Bad blood between those two is a good deal for us, says Kamas Obscura Oculus. We have Wrecking Crew. Looks like a man with a wrecking ball as a mace of some kind, maybe a flail. Four and a red for a four-five human warrior creature with reach and trample. They built the neighborhood. They know its weak points. They know all the hiding places. When they come for you, they'll find you and bring the roof down on your head. We have Mayhem Patrol. One and a red for a 1-2 Devil Warrior creature with Menace. Whenever Mayhem Patrol attacks, target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Blitz cost of one and a red. If you cast this spell for its bliss cost, it gains haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. We have Ready to Rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. Alright, so for four and a red, you get a sorcery. 
Choose one. Ready to Rumble deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker, or destroy target artifact. It's too quiet tonight. Go make trouble, says Zayatora. We have Angelic Observer. 5 and a white for a 3-3 Angel Advisor creature. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each citizen you control. It has flying. Still and solemn as the statues of her kind that decorated the Park Heights rooftops, she gazed in sorrow on the city below. We have Swooping Protector, which I think I've seen before actually in, in previous sets. Three and a white for a 2-1 creature, bird citizen, with flash and flying. Swooping Protector enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it. If it would be dealt damage or destroyed, remove a shield counter from it instead. Next one is Windshield Agent. Two and a blue for a 2-3 human soldier creature. Wing Shield Agent enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it. Whenever Wing Shield Agent attacks, up to one other target creature gains flying until end of turn. Next one is Illuminator Virtuoso. One and a white for a 1-1 human rogue creature with double strike. Whenever Illuminator Virtuoso becomes the target of a spell you control, it connives. Uh, which means to draw a card, then discard a card. If you discarded a non-land card, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. The Obscura reserve their keenest blades for traitors in their midst. We have Lagrella the Magpie. Green, white, and blue for a 2-3 Human Soldier Legendary Creature. When Lagrella the Magpie enters the battlefield, exile any number of other target creatures controlled by different players until Lagrella leaves the battlefield. When an exiled card enters the battlefield under your control this way, put two plus one plus one counters on it. Next, our rare is Shadow of Mortality. Cost of 13 plus 2 black for a 7 7 avatar creature. If your life total is less than your starting life total, this spell costs X less to cast where X is the difference. Build your towers as tall as you want. The shadow always reaches higher. Message scrawled on an alley wall. That's actually some really creepy art. Just a random shadow hand reaching out, a shadow in the background. And for our foil, we have. Nimble Larcenist, white, blue, and black for a 2-1 bird rogue creature with flying. When Nimble Larcenist enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an artifact, instant or sorcery card from it, and exile that card. Woofty. Lots of really nice cards coming out. Okay, so our art for this one. Oh, I think I know this one. Uh, I believe this is Venom Connoisseur. There it is. By Marta Nail. This is the first duplicate art card I think we've got, and it's number 21 of 81. Our land is a foil forest. Actually, I think this is my favorite of the forest uh, arts. It is full art as well. It's very nice. We have Crooked Custodian. One and a black for a 3-2 Ogre Rogue Creature. Crooked Custodian enters the battlefield tapped. Nothing to see here, just carrying a carpet. Yes, the carpet wears boots. Stop asking questions. Neat. Okay. Maestro's Theater. It's a land, and just like the other uh, party named... If you sacrifice, or sorry, when you play it, it's sacrificed, and then you search your library for the three, um, or for one of the three colors that this group has. And in this case, it's Island Swamp or Mountain card. <clears throat> Put it onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle and gain one life. Only extraordinary performers are invited to grace the grandest stage in New Capenna. We have Paragon of Modernity. That's actually a really impressive art. Cost of four colorless for a 2-2 artifact creature, Angel Warrior, with flying. 
pay three, and Paragon of Modernity gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. If exactly three colors of mana were spent to activate this ability, put a plus one, plus one counter on it in instead. No true angels have been created since the founding of New Capenna, but artisans have learned to craft elegant facsimiles. We have Waterfront District, a biome for blue and black. We have Grizzly Sigil. Pay one for the sorcery, uh, one black, and it has casualty one. As you cast this spell, you may sacrifice a creature with power one or greater. When you do, copy this spell and you may choose a new target for the copy. Choose target creature or planeswalker. If it was dealt non-combat damage this turn, Grizzly Sigil deals three damage to it and you gain three life. Otherwise, Grizzly Sigil deals one damage to it and you gain one life. We have Corpse Appraiser. Blue, black, and red for a 3-3 vampire rogue creature. When Corpse Appraiser enters the battlefield, exile up to one target creature card from a graveyard. If a card is put into exile this way, look at, look at the top three cards of your library. Then put one of those cards into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Scarcely a mark, a true work of art. Okay, so we have Rogue's Gallery, which we just saw in an art card. Two and a black for a sorcery. For each color, return up to one target creature card of that color from your graveyard to your hand. Between the five of them, They'd committed every crime on the books and invented a few new ones. Neat. We've got Mr. Orfeo the Boulder. One, a black, red, and green for a 2 4 legendary creature. Whenever you attack, double target creature's power until end of turn. I believe this is the alternate art for this card. We have Skybridge Towers. Another biome for white and blue. Our rare today is Broker's Ascendancy. Green, white, and blue. For an enchantment, at the beginning of your end step, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And more importantly, a profitable one. Now, sign here. And our foil today is Plasma Jockey. Very nice. Three and a red for a 3-1 Viashino Warrior Creature. Whenever Plasma Jockey attacks, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. Blitz cost of two plus a red. <clears throat> and last but not least, our final deck, or our final pack. We have, let's check out that art card. I have no idea what this is. I honestly don't even know if I've seen it before. This is a... Oh! Jetmere's Garden by Dominic Mayer, number 76 of 81. Very nice. This pack's land is a basic plains. We have a Gold Hound for the first card. One red for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature, which is a treasure dog, with first strike and menace. Tap and sacrifice gold pound, add one mana of any color. The staccato clatter of its metal claws on pavement is unmistakable. Speaking of animals, we have a chrome cat. <clears throat> Pay three for a 3-2 artifact creature. When chrome cat enters the battlefield, scry one. I always say if it's breathing, it's lying. Luckily, my friend here does neither, says Lord Xander. Okay, we have Exhibition Magician. Two and a red for a 2-1 human wizard creature. When Exhibition Magician enters the battlefield, choose one. Create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token or create a treasure token. We have Light em Up. Shooting fireballs, that's pretty cool. One and a red for a sorcery, casualty two. 
So that means in this case, the creature you sacrifice has to have a power of two or greater. Light him up deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. Cool. We have Sizzling Soloist. Pretty neat. Three and a red for a 3-2 a human citizen creature with alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, that creature attacks during its controller's next combat phase if able. Luxurious Libation. Pretty neat. Very magical. X and a green for an instant. Target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn. Create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. Crisp, flavorful, and energizing. Perhaps the most elegant offering of Halo in Park Heights. Five stars. Consuelo, restaurant critic. <coughs> We have Rocco Cabaret Caterer once again, but non foil. We have another Maestro's Charm. Another Botanical Plaza. Wonder if we'll get anything new for the rare. We have Black Market Tycoon. I don't know if I've seen this one before. Let's zoom in on the. Uh, pretty neat. So it's a red and a green for a 2 2. Cat Rogue Creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, Black Market Tycoon deals 2 damage to you for each treasure you control. Tap to create a treasure token. I have exactly what you need. The question is, how badly do you need it? And the last foil for this pack is Patch Up. Alright, so it's two and a white for a sorcery. Return up to three target creature cards with total mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Don't tell me who sent you or who you work for. The less I know, the better. And that is all for today. Thank you all for watching. Remember, if you liked what you saw, hit that like button down below. And if you want to, please subscribe and hit the bell so you are notified the next time we post anything as always thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time